How do you do? Strange how many people compulsively buy lottery tickets, hoping to hit the jackpot, even though the odds are overwhelmingly against them. The enticement to gamble, like most addictions, is cloaked in deception. The man in this story was deceived into hoping he'd win big, but that didn't happen until his heart and mind and life were unshackled. Drug overdose? No indication. He collapsed at one of the casinos. Temperature? 103. Irregular heartbeat, labored breathing. His BP was so low, the paramedics put pressure pants on him. Any ID? Yes, he's an Israeli. Shining the light of the world into the darkness, this is Unshackled, true life stories, dramatized and produced in Chicago by Pacific Garden Mission. Nobody cares. That's the feeling that people have when they lose their jobs and their homes. But folks at Pacific Garden Mission care so much that they keep the doors open day and night, offering refuge to the homeless ones, a safe place to sleep, fresh clothing, nourishing meals. And friends around the country care enough to send financial gifts. So the mission even provides medical and dental care in the mission clinic to resident guests. Pastors and counselors at the old lighthouse share the good news that nobody cares as much as the one who provides the way out of their predicament. Turning to him is the turning point in millions of lives. And that's what this program celebrates, going out to the world in 13 languages. Now for broadcast around the earth, here's program number 3196 in the series Unshackled, the program that makes you face yourself and think. Hezzy? Yes? The nurse tells me you regained consciousness a little while ago. Doctor, where am I? In a hospital in Atlantic City. We found no health care identification in your wallet, so this is our welfare ward. Thank you. There is no way I can pay. I have a bad heart. Did I have another heart attack? No. Your problems are pneumonia and internal bleeding. We're doing what we can. Thank you, doctor. I failed again. The man in our story was no ordinary person thrust upon the health care system. His was an extraordinary career. Then, a disastrous fall. This is the true story of a man called Hezzy from the classic files of Unshackled. Hezzy was born in Jerusalem, a sabra like his father before him. And like their fathers before them, their birth certificates were stamped Levite, the tribe of Levi, who were the ancient Hebrew priests of God. Hezzy was 15 and a half when they enlisted in the British Army, service that qualified him to be an officer in the Israeli Army, fighting for independence in 1948. Promotions came fast, and he was soon a colonel commanding a battalion in the 101st Commandos, one of Israel's most elite fighting forces. By then, he was married and had a son. Hezzy, you're a legend in your own time. <laughs> Think so, eh? So they tell me. Fastest time in the 20 mile endurance race. Huh? With a full pack. <laughs> and all those parachute jumps. 450? <laughs> Many in combat. And you think you should quit now? Yes. I'm going to resign and go to university. But you're obviously being groomed for political leadership. I want to study business and uh, make some money so our children can prosper. Hezzy earned a degree in business administration, opened a business and soon controlled a large part of the appliance market in Israel. Hezzy and his wife had two sons and a daughter, and he was a wealthy man, a chess master who represented Israel in international competition. A few sharp investments brought even more money. Then came some bad investments and the fatal attraction. Well, Hezzy, you've been standing here for five minutes without saying a word. The speed of the money changing hands is unbelievable. 
Have you observed the wins and losses of the man in front of us? Yes, I have. As, as nearly as I can tell, he gained some 40,000 francs just while we've been standing here. Is that possible? Oh, yes. As a matter of fact, I put the figure closer to 50,000. Incredible. Do winnings like that happen often? Certainly. A number of players in this room are winning at this very moment. How did they do it? Uh, be realistic, though. At least as many players are losing. Mm, that I understand. <laughs> Do you suppose I have any uh, talent uh, for this sort of thing? Talent is a factor, but most gamblers would agree that chance or luck is a bigger factor. Mm, I can see that. As to what you call talent, let's consider. You're a chess master. Chess moves at a snail's pace. This is more like lightning. Nevertheless, being successful as a chess player shows that you can think clearly and logically under pressure. You're also an expert bridge player, and this may be more to the point. Why? You're used to counting cards as a hand is played out. This can be very useful in games like blackjack. Then I think I'll try my luck. Mm. <laughs> but I need your help and advice as I learn. Happy to oblige. Here, take this money. It's not much, but perhaps you can make it grow while you're teaching me. Hmm. Gambling soon became an addiction to Hezi. He thought he could beat the casinos and recoup the money he had lost in some unwise business ventures. He began to visit Las Vegas, Monte Carlo, and Atlantic City, where he stayed until he had lost the money he had brought with him. Then he returned to Israel to look after his business interests. Needless to say, his gambling took a toll on his family. I'm going to bring up a very painful subject. Gambling? Yes. Have you any idea what you're doing to all of us, to me and the children? The children are practically grown and on their own. They still need you and some help with their education. You know I'm trying to recover my losses. I believe you, but I also know that that's unlikely to happen. Even if it did, I think you'd go right on gambling. Gambling is like drugs to a drug addict. Assuming you're right, what then? That's the really painful subject. I'm talking about divorce. After all these good years? There have been some very good years, Hazy, and I am grateful for them. But as I look ahead, I see nothing but bad years and growing worse. Is divorce legally possible for us? I have taken that question to Orthodox rabbis. They tell me that in view of your compulsive gambling... The answer is yes. Are you saying you want her divorce now? Not now. I love you. There is no one else in my life, Rezi, and I don't intend there ever will be. But I don't want your addiction to destroy the family. I want you to sign an agreement that will let me get a divorce, even if you're out of the country on one of your gambling sprees. I'll know when the time has come. I realize I'm in the wrong. Will you sign the agreement? If it will ease your mind, yes. The trips to America became more frequent. The losses grew. He would take $25,000 and a non-refundable return ticket home and fly to some remote city to gamble. Then... In 1987, Hezi suffered a heart attack while he was back in Israel. They rushed him to the hospital in Jerusalem. You could have died, Hezi. I'm glad I didn't. The doctor said your heart stopped, but they were able to start it again. I don't remember anything. A few minutes later, it stopped again, but they managed to get it going. Then it stopped a third time. Good thing. I'm a fighter. Then came the fourth and fifth times. Five times? My heart stopped? Maybe God is trying to get your attention. He did. I'm not ready to die. So, what about the future? They said only 30% of your heart is functioning. No wonder I feel so tired. You'll have to slow down, Hazy, and rest. Certain that his days were numbered, Hezi completely abandoned his family to pursue gambling. In October 1987, Hezi flew to Atlantic City with his non-refundable airline ticket, planning to spend his days and his wealth as a high roller. He lost $250,000 in one day. 
bankrupt financially as well as in body and soul. The once proud man had lost everything. He sat on a bench, looking at the Atlantic Ocean and decided to end his life. He would jump from the top floor of the tallest casino. Instead, he collapsed and ended up in the hospital. These are your release papers. Do you have any place to go? Yes, uh, and no. I don't understand. Uh, I have a return ticket to Israel, but it's from New York. Uh, my problem is getting there from here. I, I wonder if you could provide me with a bus ticket to New York? I'm sorry, but we have no funds for that. Then uh, I have no place to go. What about the local rescue mission? Uh, what is a rescue mission? A place that gives meals and clothing and beds to people who have no place to go. They might find a way for you to get to New York. Uh, how, how do I get to this rescue mission? I'm afraid you'll have to walk. I'll write down the address for you. Uh, uh, thank you. Maybe I better write down some instructions for getting there, too. Is uh, this your uh, ambulance? I'm the driver. Sir, I've just been uh, released from the hospital. Could you give me a lift to uh, uh, this address? It's, it's a rescue mission. This is an ambulance, not a taxi. It's only a few blocks. Which way do I go? <coughs> uh, come on, get in. I'll take you right to the mission door. What, what is this mission we're going to? Well, it's run by Christians to help people in trouble. Christians? But I'm a Jew from Israel. That makes no difference. After all, Jesus was a Jew. Ah, uh, yes. Yeshua. His hometown is not far from the one where my mother was born. This place takes in anybody. I hear there's an Arab working there now. Well, I speak Arabic, too. <clears throat> That's the place. Just go in and tell them you need help. In a moment, we'll hear about that help. Unshackled is now broadcast around the world in 13 languages, translated by nationals and dramatized by their own people. In Europe, this includes seven languages besides English. Here are some emails from listeners there. From Poland, this man writes, I listened to Unshackled on radio, the testimony of a drunkard who had totally ruined his life and that of his family, too. It was a picture of me. A light appeared in my life. It was Jesus. I am a changed man now. This man writes from England. Unshackled is a massive blessing to me. It shows God's dealing with us in mercy and even provides valuable tips on how to evangelize. An Albanian man writes, Though I have a handicap, I know through your program that God loves me just the way I am, and my heart is full of joy. A ten-year-old in Romania writes, Thank you for Unshackled, where I learn good things, like how to behave and avoid doing bad things. To learn more about this ministry or any of our other ministries, write to Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. Or email address unshackled at pgm.org. When Hezi walked into the Atlantic City Rescue Mission, the man on duty was an Arab, a Jordanian who had served in the Syrian army. These former soldiers who had once been enemies had much in common. Both men grew up in the Middle East, both spoke Arabic and Hebrew, and both were gamblers. Yes, I used to gamble compulsively, too. You mean you quit? Uh, several years ago. But temptation is all around you. Wasn't it hard to stop? With men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Which God? <laughs> I think I've lost faith in God. You just don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus? I thought you 